Good morning. You are listening to Mindset Growth Podcast. Today, we are talking with Genesis Haycrick. We discuss morning routines, non-negotiables in life, common excuses, and how to change your mindset to appreciate every moment. Here is our conversation with Genesis. Uh, Good morning, Genesis. Why don't we start with, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? So I am a mom of four. I've got four young children. I have a nine-year-old, six-year-old, four and two, and um, life is definitely busy now, but um, it doesn't take away from all the exciting endeavors that are going on from business perspective. So I I am also a life and career coach. I I focus a lot on um, developing businesses, developing entrepreneurs, um, helping them to get to a point where they're feeling productive and efficient on a daily basis. And um, it's, it's exciting because we're in a place now where you can do so much, so much more technology wise and, and, you know, work from home and, and do things from managing things from your household. But with that being said, there's also a lot of challenges that present themselves. So so I kind of insert myself and help individuals to create strategic plans while creating a lifestyle that they love and, um, you know, building their businesses out while taking care of their children. And then, you know, just, just doing all of it, but in a way that they're not overwhelmed, overburdened and burning out every single day. So um, that's one of my major focuses. And um, I'm also happily married and um, am a resident of Florida, living in Sarasota for four years now and just loving that lifestyle. So (laughs) absolutely. There's a lot to to venture out into down there, isn't there? Absolutely. And it's significantly different from Illinois. So that's that's and so <laughs> enjoying the weather pretty much year round for the most part and and just uh, spending a lot of time with the kids doing outdoor activities and and just getting involved in the community. We've got an awesome community here in Sarasota. Awesome. What uh what um what brought took you down to Sarasota? I mean, were, when you made that whole decision, I mean, were, was it just the climate and a bit of the clientele that you were maybe marketing to or Uh, And let's maybe even go back a step. I'm curious to know what part of Illinois and, you know, what what some of your experiences were that formed and shaped you to do what you do today. Yeah, so so Florida was kind of on the radar for my husband and I for a little while. He had parents that were snowbirds, so they were kind of coming back and forth. So we knew a little bit about the area, but um just, you know, we, we just weren't satisfied in Illinois. We're looking for more opportunity, more growth. And, um, of course the weather. (laughs) 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 So, uh, you know, Florida was a great spot and, and our area is just booming. It's growing every single day. So it's, it's just a really neat place to be. And I don't think there's anywhere else in the United States that compares to our community. So, um, we did our research, we looked around, we looked in a variety of different places to move our family and, and that just seemed to be the right spot. And and we have young children, so I I guess we just kind of figured, you know, if we don't do it now, we, we might never. <laughs> so Absolutely. Were they in school yet? Uh, our oldest was in preschool. So so it would be okay. his kindergarten year when, when we moved down. So it was really the beginning of okay getting entrenched in the, the school stuff. So it was time yeah. to do it if you were going to do it, right? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Perfect. <laughs> what's uh, what's your morning routine look like? Because I can only imagine with four children, I had four as well. And they were, mine were, I had four in basically five years. But <laughs> so it was, it was a bit crazy, well, I know. And I don't know if a schedule not was. Not for everyone. <laughs> not, yeah, I'm not sure a schedule was even really, uh part of the equation some days, but, or a routine, I should say, but I'm, I'm, I, I know with what you do, you probably have one. Yeah. And, and here's what I always say when, when someone's creating a morning routine, give yourself grace because not every day is going to be perfect. <laughs> not every day is going to plan out exactly as you plan it to. And so we, we just need to be able to have a little bit of flexibility there. And that flexibility allows for us to be less rigid and actually accomplish more in the long run if we're able to to move things around. I guess I would say the biggest thing for me is when I wake up in the morning, I think about 
my mindset in terms of how I want my day to look. And so mapping it out in a way in my mind where I'm seeing results with all the things that I'm doing. And it's easy immediately when you wake up in the morning to start get over starting to get overwhelmed and thinking like, oh my gosh, I've got to do this and I've got to do this and this and this. Well, if we wake up with a mindset where we're just ready to take on the day, we're motivated to be action oriented, we're excited about opportunities that are in front of us, things are going to be a lot more enjoyful, uh, enjoyable, and, and we're going to feel more joyful and, and happy and just in general, look forward to things that, that we're going to do, even if there's something that's challenging that, that we have to face that day. Mm-hmm. With that being said, you know, as, as the morning unfolds outside of my mindset, I'm always um, quick to, to look at what are my non-negotiables? What are the things that I absolutely have to do? The most important things for my day. And I like to I like to do three personal and three professional. So okay. I will write those down in a journal and and I'll, I'll look at those and say, what can I do to make sure that these happen today? And these don't have to be big things. These can be very small, very minute, but just help us to stay on track with where we're going to make sure we're still progressing. And it can be something as simple as getting out of the bed with a smile on your face. It doesn't be like, you know, these big massive goals. I think that we tend to get up and think that we have to achieve every single thing on our to-do list and, and conquer the world. And the reality of it is that it's just not realistic to have these to-do lists that are 20, 30, 40, you know, tasks long to to expect that we're going to be able to be successful in all of those different areas. So I'm a firm believer in simplifying as much as possible. So whatever routine that you're creating in the morning, whether it's, you know, three to five different things that you're trying to stay consistent with, or even one or two things I think the important thing is that we we do stay consistent with the types of activities that we do. And even if it's just two to five minutes that, that we're dedicating to something that's helping us to propel ourselves forward, it'll make a huge difference for the rest of the day. Right. And I like uh, you mentioned to make sure that you give yourself grace because we know that those hiccups happen daily and it's so easy to allow those those hiccups to become something much bigger and allow it to just, you know, ruin our day or maybe even our week. So getting in that mindset of it's okay, let it go, move on to the next is, is an important one to, to grasp as well. Exactly. And, and, you know, when you do that, it just allows, again, like I said, for more flexibility. And what I've learned over the course of my life and having four children, the more (laughs) rigid you are about every single thing that you're trying to do, the more stressed you are. So in order Mm -hmm. to that if if we can allow for things to be moved around for um, you know changes to occur then then you'll just naturally feel like you can get more done in the day and that that anxiety that stress that overwhelm is not going to build up and create this downward spiral before you know it you feel the ultimate burnout right <laughs> right so with that being said Gary did you have any question for her there no go ahead <laughs> we've got some rapid fire questions for you genesis just kind of sure. uh just to throw you off a little bit here we go <laughs> what nickname did you have growing up well <laughs> this is kind of uh, a nickname that, that i didn't particularly like was sega <laughs> was so, what <laughs> sega as in sega genesis oh <laughs> <laughs> okay was that your favorite game <laughs> Um, no, <laughs> no, it's just kind of, you know, the kids at school would be like, what's up, Sega, <laughs> you know, got it. Yeah. Um, but, um, my mom always calls me Bubba for Bubba girl. Cause I was always, you know, her, her sweet little girl and only girl. <laughs> so, yeah. um, uh, two brothers and, um, my uncle would always call me beginning because that's what my name means. So I am oh, the wow. beginning. <laughs> so so that's I, I kind of like to use that in my branding, in my marketing, because that that's my hope is that I will help individuals to create a new beginning in their life in some capacity. But even any type of part of my message that I'm sharing, that they'll be able to gain some kind of insight and to apply uh, 
a new beginning in some component. So, um, that is, yeah, that is awesome. Uh, what, uh, what age do you want to retire? I, I don't know if I will ever want to fully retire because mm-hmm. I just love, what I do so much. I just want to so- high five you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think to myself, even if I'm in a nursing home or, you know, in a place where I can't really move around much and I'm, I'm just sitting in the room and hanging out, I'm like, I could still do a Zoom call. and I could still help people and inspire people. And so I, I like to think to myself that there will always be opportunities to help others in some capacity. So I can't ever really imagine just being 100% done. Right. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, as I get closer to that point, that may change, but I, I'm just, I feel like right now I'm like, I'm just getting started. <laughs> so. <laughs> You're right. That they also say that there's that aspect of, um, active mind, healthy body once you get older. So it's interesting to me that you brought up, I'm in a nursing home, I can still do Zoom calls. But <laughs> yeah, coaching, it, it re- never really leaves a person, does it? No, no. And I, I think that there's always ways to incorporate that in, in you know, what you do. And, and even if it's not for money, for money, if it's volunteer work, if you're, you know, doing something in some capacity where you're helping others and, and you are, inspiring them to keep going then you know there, there's always a way to incorporate that in your daily routine all right next one so we know that you are uh, kind of a snowbird you mentioned you go back and forth or the the parents were snowbirds i guess but what's your preference summer or winter definitely summer <laughs> <laughs> And I feel like I'm experiencing summer so much of the time when we're in Florida uh-huh. it's year round we we get to be outside and, you know, even in the winter months, you, you do get to swim and that kind of thing. So I would have to say I'm a very outdoorsy kind of person. So I love to go for hikes. I, I love to run and uh, experience as much as life has to offer. And I don't think you can do that quite as much when it's freezing cold out. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a good point. You do it in different ways, but you're right. It's uh, a total different aspect. And I think yeah. certain parts of the country maybe offer better opportunities for that than the Midwest <laughs> does. <laughs> uh, what's your uh, favorite way to relax? You know, this is an interesting question for me because I do have a hard time relaxing. I'm I'm a go, go, go type person, and I typically don't sit down until I'm ready to go to sleep. But I would say my relaxation usually comes in a long run. So when I go for a run, I can relax my mind. I I don't have to go at a fast pace. I can just go at a very comfortable pace where I feel free to be able to completely exert myself. And and I think that that for me is necessary because, you know, the, the four kids and building the business and, and you know, just being there in every capacity that I can be, I need to have that that separation and that boundary. So in order for me to do that, a lot of the time I, I am not away from my kids. I'm not away from everyone for an extended period of time. So running for me is, it's kind of my go-to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what excuse do you hear from clients regularly? I would say for for most clients, I'm just not ready for this. I'm just not yeah. ready to fully invest myself. And and that's really what needs to happen. And and I think for a lot of people, the idea of changing their life, even if they're not necessarily happy and they're not where they want to be, it's scary. You know, there's there's that element of fear is that I'm gonna have to potentially sacrifice other things. I'm going to have to take a step back from these things that give me comfort. And uh, comfort is the the ultimate hindrance from us growing and, and moving forward. So I would say there's there's that aspect of fear. And then there's there's just that hesitation of, is this going to work for me? Am I going to be able to do this? And so it's, it's my job. And, and, for other coaches, it's our job to be able to 
diminish that and, and to help them to overcome those blocks. And I think limiting beliefs for most people are, are why they tend not to move forward. I would agree with that. I just had a conversation with a potential and he's now starting in a uh, one-on-one coaching with, with me. And when we visited recently, his comment was, I know if I do this, my business will be years ahead in two to three years from, you know, the comparison of not doing it. And so I just asked him, you know, what was holding him back? And he, he goes, I'm not, not sure. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not sure I'm ready. And I said, well, the one thing I want out of you when you come into this and decide to go down this road is I want you in a hundred percent. And I, I'm sure you see that too. There's times people, maybe they can do it because they can easily afford it or for whatever reason motivates them to do it. But if they're not really into going through that process and making the changes, it's to me, it's uh it's difficult to get help them reach the re, get the results and reach their potential. Uh, I imagine you experience that as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah, and and you want to be able to work with someone that's ready, but you may agree with me on this that you're also wanting to help those people to bring them outside of that limitation space and say, "Come with me." You know, I want to take you to the next level. You've got you've got to make the decision, but I can bring you with me if you're willing to take the action steps necessary and it's so hard sometimes to decipher you know if you should just let go or if you know they're they're really just they they need you and you know they're ready for you and you just need to help them to get to that yes and of course we we want we only want to work with people that are fully invested and fully ready But at the same time, I find myself at different times where I'm like, man, you have so much potential. And I just I want you to come with me right now. I don't want you to wait another year (laughs) to move forward. The time is now. And and as you said, you know, uh, it, it does take time. And with the support of a coach, it makes all the difference in the world because there's that added support, that added accountability and and the opportunity to just you know, be, be using the coach's experience and advice and, and tools and everything that they have to offer to be able to apply on a daily basis, where if you're trying to do it on your own, it's just so tough. And, and I think so many people just don't realize that, you know, when they initially start out and then it takes, you know, three to five more years before they're like, man, I should have just brought somebody in right. <laughs> for it. And I believe in coaching so much, I still use one. I just believe there's that element that we really become so ingrained in what we're doing that we can't really step back and get that aerial view of what we're even experiencing ourselves. So I'm, exactly. I'm so adamant about that. Uh, me too. And and I, I know that we were going to talk about that, like having a coach, and, and I do as well. I, I am working with someone and I have invested thousands and thousands of dollars in in different types of programs and workshops and one-on-one coaching. And I don't think that there's anything that can help you to stay more accountable or to keep you Mm -hmm. on track with your goals than having a coach. And and I I think that I'll probably always have one, (laughs) you know, and my toes to keep me moving forward. And, you know, we don't know what we don't know. And there's always going to be people that are ahead of us wherever we're at that is that have pounded the pavement and and been there and done that and that can help bring us up so it's you know it's as you continue to move forward and and you learn more and you grow and and you experience life you can apply everything that you're learning from them to others and it just it's that you know cycle from you know all of the people that have gone before us to be able to to utilize their knowledge and experience as well so Absolutely. I'm, I'm a hundred percent on that too. And I did jump ahead on our questions there just a bit. So I didn't, didn't mean to throw you off, but while we're there, we may as well, you know, uh, continue or kind of complete that whole conversation. Uh, yeah. is, is that, uh, you know, is it the type of thing that you, and, you know, I think, well, let me back up just here a bit. I like to hear you say that you spend a lot of money on self-development because, 
that's that's really uh, the biggest investment any human can make. And I tell clients this all the time. It's a little different, though, when maybe the person that's trying to take the money from them uh, is telling them that. But there's no greater investment than a person invest in themselves. And clearly you do that. So uh, do you work with like the same coach you've had for years? Do you sometimes move around? Can you tell us a little bit about about that? Sure. Well, I've I've moved around a little bit. I, I stayed with someone for a couple of years, uh, but then I was looking for specific niche areas to focus in that that coaches provide a unique uh, coaching aspect. And and so you know whether it's for the social media training or getting a better understanding of how to navigate. Um, funnels and you know things like that I mean there's there's certain things that I feel coaches can provide from a self-help aspect that that are really important that we need to ask ourselves what do we really need right now and and is this individual going to help continue to to push me forward in these areas and I, I think that it's it's always important to fulfill the program that we're in so whatever that program is whether it's a three month program, six months, one year. Um, <clears throat> if that coach is fully invested in you and, and you feel like you're getting those results, I, I think that it's important to, to stay the course and to keep going with it. Cause I think that there's also that added aspect of, you know, sometimes someone's fearful if they're not getting results in the first week or two, <laughs> you know, they, they're like, wait a second, why, why aren't things coming to fruition for me? And what I think individuals need to realize and remember is that there's always that that time period where where we're creating those habits those those new routines those new um goals and uh, most importantly mindset that's that's what really comes into this is that we are changing our life we're changing our lifestyle we're we're doing things differently than we were before and it takes longer for some than it does for others and just depending on the level of dedication that we put forth that's that's going to be really really important to to consider if we're not putting in the steps necessary in order to get the results we can't expect things to happen overnight and so with that being said i have worked with a variety of coaches i have never personally had a bad experience i've loved the coaches that i've worked with and i've been doing this for i've been about uh 12 years i would say in the self-help industry where i've been working with coaches and i've been building my business and you know promoting and getting it out there and and so there's there's definitely a lot to unpack and and i think that you know if you're looking for a coach there there should be some kind of synergy you know look, look for the coach that that you feel commonality with and then what's always been a big thing for me is I look at that person, I say, I want to be more like them. I, I want to have more of what they have. And uh, just, I, I think that sometimes individuals can get caught up in, in joining a program and it might not necessarily be the right fit. So so doing that research ahead of time about what, what the coach has to offer and getting excited about the content and the kinds of results that they can provide. Because I mean, Gary, you, I'm sure you'd agree with me. There's just, there's so much out there. There's so many different types of programs and what people coach on. Oh, for you know, sure. Clear on and what they can provide for you. Yeah. You know, you can potentially be disappointed. No, we've, and I've done the same. It depends on what we're working. And I think that's one thing that, or one, what it depends on what I'm trying to work on, I should say, in whether it be career and life and that, but uh, I think that's where folks do a little research and then have a few conversations. They'll they'll quickly understand if they're going to align with that personality or not, which is huge. Right. There's got to be that connection. Yep. A lot of this that we've that you have spoken about and just um, coaching in general reminds me so much of a personal trainer, a physical strength coach. You know, you mentioned. Um, why am I not seeing results in a week or two? Well, you know, <laughs> if you think about going to the gym and having a personal trainer, you're not going to see those results either, but you need to stick to a routine. 
you need to make sure that, you know, what are you wanting? Are you wanting a nutritionalist? Are you wanting um, cardio? Are you wanting strength? So it's, I think it's, it's not the same, obviously, but it's very similar if you break it down that way and try to help people understand, well, you're not going to go to the gym and lose, you know, 20 pounds in a week either. I, so. I couldn't agree more with you. And, and, you know, I think you just have to go into it with the mindset that I'm committed to this and I'm going to commit for this period of time, which, you know, however long that is, and say, I'm going to give 100% to whatever I'm doing with this coach. And, and the action is really what bears those results. And so I, I think that that's a perfect example. Um, and again, what it is that you're wanting with that trainer, whether it's from a personal standpoint or to get stronger, to get leaner, you know, having those goals in mind ahead of time is what's really going to own for how you act. All right, we'll go back and get back on track here a little bit. How'd you get into coaching? <laughs> so I have always loved the idea of of helping individuals and, and giving back and just being involved in the community. I volunteered a lot when I was in high school. And um, eventually I worked for the public schools, the Chicago public schools, and I, I found myself kind of entrenched in in navigating all of the this curriculum and, and things that I wanted to do for the children, for the youth that, you know, kind of helping them to figure out where they were going to go in their future and, and how things were going to move forward for them because there was so much, um, there, there's so many challenges in Chicago with these students from their home life to, um, you know, just growing up in Chicago period is, is a very, it's a tough spot. So I, uh, I was helping our, I, I was a uh, paraprofessional and I was working to help the teacher of the classroom to create curriculums. And what I realized is that there's ways that we can help people on such a deeper level. And, and it just really got ingrained in um, helping them to navigate the, the day-to-day processes uh, for the younger generation. And I, I got really excited about the fact that there's so much that can unravel here. There's so many things that, that can be done if the mindset shifts. And, and it doesn't matter where you come from, um, you know, what you're doing at home. If you change the way you think and you change the way that you act and you change the way that you behave, your future can be entirely different. And so I, I realized that from a really young age that life can be totally different depending on, you know, the way that you go about life in general. And so I went back and I got my master's degree in organizational leadership. I became a certified life and career coach. And I I got more and more entrenched in working with the youth and providing programs for the youth. I then branched off into corporate. I branched off into um, small business and entrepreneurship. And, and then of course I became a mom. So now I work with a lot of busy moms that are trying to manage it all while building their businesses. So I have a wide array of different clients that I work with and there's, there's no one group that, that I would say that is, you know, at the pinnacle, um, because I've just loved so much working with the youth. I've loved so much, uh, working with corporate and I've really, really enjoyed the the entrepreneurial, um, you know, helping individuals just get started, get get going, and and bring everything together. Um, obviously, with being a, a mother, it changed things a lot. And being a mom of four, life has kind of thrown me for <laughs> I, it's it's become a whirlwind at times. Uh, but I. I just love the way that things are now. I love that I've been able to orchestrate it in a way that I have a very balanced lifestyle where if I'm with my kids, I'm there 100% of the time. If I'm working, then I'm working. I am 100% committed to that. So that's what I really, um, I, I help people to get really clear on what those daily habits and routines and structures look like. And, and I bring all of that into all of those different sectors um, of corporate, of entrepreneurship, of motherhood. 
Um, and I feel like at the end of the day, if you can harness that, if you can harness the habitual routines and the way that you think and do things, you can have your life any way that you want it. And, and so with all this experience and all of the, um, life development of coming from one place to the next, I've just realized that life is so precious and that every moment does matter. And so I've almost kind of become obsessed with helping other people to get to that place where they can feel like I am really enjoying my life. I love my life. And, and I, I feel happiness in the little moments. And I want to take them outside of that busyness and just <clears throat> help them to remember why we're really here because it's not just about getting stuff done. It's not just about, you know, finishing a to-do list. It's it's about really immersing yourself in the entire me because, <clears throat> excuse me, where we are now is what matters the most because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So, so getting really clear on the things that are most important is what I'm most passionate about in helping people to fulfill uh, what brings them that most joyful um, daily routine. And, and so through all of it, it can be orchestrated through, through processes and strategies. And it's fun when you can really break that down. You know, I kind of gave you the, the long-winded story <clears throat> of everything, but that's really where it started was when I was in the schools and it's evolved to where it is now, where, where I get to travel across the United States and, and I get to talk to the hearts of different groups all the time because it, there's still that the same passion about what brings you the greatest level of fulfillment and what's going to mean the most to you um, as, as you go about your daily routine and your habits. And so, so we, we are always looking at, <laughs> you know, how, how we can do more and how we can be more. And I think one of the things that we need to remember the most is that we have the ability to be able to be grateful and there's so much to be grateful for where we're at right now. And so remembering the little things and cherishing even the struggle, um, you know, is, is what our journey is about. And that's, that's how we've become where we are today. And so I, I just love talking about all of that and, it's, I think, so important for us to just, um, you know, take each day and live it like it was our last and, and do the best that we can and just give 100% and we'll never feel like I could have done more. I should have done something different. For sure. I think I see oftentimes where, and I just recently had a conversation with a gentleman who was facing retirement in a few years and somewhere he looks at a stat that says when people retire, they live about eight more years. And he was basically depressed, thinking, I've worked all my life, not really enjoying it, but working for my retirement, and I've got eight years to enjoy it. <laughs> so yeah. it, it comes back to what you're saying, you know, find find the joy in the small things and in the day-to-day. Oh. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure if maybe you kind of answered the next question as well, you know, what you enjoy about coaching, but uh, it's just, uh, you know, maybe you can give me a a little snapshot of that or summarize that, but I take it from what you said. It's just the huge difference you like to see in changes of that decisions people make for life changing events. Yes. And, and I think for me is when someone gets to a point where they've realized that they don't have to let fear be the, the ultimate decision maker for themselves that they can overcome basically anything that comes in their way, any type of barrier, any type of uh, setback, failure that they've experienced in the past, when they're able to look that in the eye and say, you know what, I'm not going to allow you to stop me or to prevent me from taking action on my dream. And so when I see that realized and that they're taking action regardless of what what could potentially happen that risk factor they're not they're not allowing that um to prevent them from from doing what they really want to do that that gives me the greatest sense of fulfillment and and knowing that they are taking the action steps i know that it doesn't necessarily happen overnight but the fact that they are committed to moving forward 
into taking action and creating change, I know that they're going to be happier in the long run. I know that they're going to get more results, that, that they're going to feel more fulfilled because when we're in our comfort zone, that's, that's the greatest hindrance to really allowing ourselves to use our gifting with the world. And, and I think that there's so many gifts that are just sitting stagnant <laughs> in people that they're just, you know, they're comfortable in their little routines. And what they don't realize that the, is that there's so much more for them out there. So my book that I wrote, my first book is called Unleash Your Potential. And that's what all of this is about, is being able to unleash it to the world so that you can be fulfilled and so that you can share your message in whatever capacity that is to make a difference because I don't believe we were put on this earth just to go through the progressions. I believe that we were called out to do something amazing. And that amazing thing doesn't mean that you have to be world famous. It just means that you have to get out there and you have to do what needs to be done. And, and you have to follow in what you feel that call is on your heart and, and to not allow that fear, as I said before, um, to be the preventative in, in all the things that you do, because there's, there's, I mean, how many fears are out there that are, I mean, think about where we are now and like with the economy, with, uh, the wars that are happening with, um, social issues, people are scared to do so many things. And, I want to help break them outside of that to realize that those circumstances don't control you as a person. Your individual decisions are what you make, not what someone else makes for you. And it's, so go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. It's really easy to get into that habit of um, being reactionary with your decision making, um, <clears throat> just reacting and acting out of fear rather than um, uh, being proactive. And I'm guessing that that is probably one of the bigger things that you help people with before they can move on to figuring out their talents. Yes, yes, exactly. Because yeah. so much people will come and say, I want to do all of these things, but, 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 <laughs> but, but this. Yeah. And, and I say, why, why, but this, and, yeah. and then, Let's remove for, that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I've always loved the quote by uh, Tony Robbins, which is energy flows where attention goes. Yes. And whatever we're focusing on, whatever that is, that's going to be the main thing that's going to be the source of our attention. And, and, you know, just like basically what we're concentrating on on a daily basis. So think about how your mindset could be completely changed if you weren't you weren't allowing all of those negative thoughts to penetrate your mind rather thinking about how to be grateful or all of the forward positive movements that you're going to be making on a daily basis concentrating on that versus I'm so unfortunate because blah 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 and so I there's always ways to retract those those negative thoughts we can't just we can't entirely prevent them from coming into our mind, but we can replace them. And, and that's one of the biggest things that I think <clears throat> as a, a habitual rule, we, we need to look at how can we continue to replace anything that's holding us back with something that's positive because naturally there's going to be a space there. So we have to put something in to fill it. So if we are feeling about something how can we put some positivity into it and and change the dynamic here and so i i fully believe that <clears throat> any of that is possible if we just set the tone for um reframing the way that we think and so so there's a lot of mindset training that i go into as well and and focusing on where where are the thoughts coming in that are creating the most negativity for us at this time in our life. And, and so it's, as you said, you know, those different circumstances that are continuing to come up in ways. And I think breaking them apart and putting them in little 
circles, I, I typically will use a mind map for things that keep coming up. And I say, okay, so here's, here's the source and we're going to pinpoint exactly how this is coming up, why this is coming up, and then how we can break this down. And once you can get clarity on those things, you can really start to dissolve those limiting beliefs and, you know, gain a huge amount of traction from there. Right. That's a lot of good stuff there, Genesis. That's a lot to unpack, isn't it? But that's, that's, <laughs> that's what you're here for. And that's why you have, um, I think you have different programs that are probably tailored to how long a person needs or yes okay. yep. and I, I will typically work with my clients for three months six months and a year and so just we, we will do an evaluation process on our first call and determine what those needs are and and how they would like to move forward and I I love the opportunity to work with anyone at any level. Um, you know, so if they're coming to me and saying, you know, this is all I feel like I can do at this time, I say, okay, well, let's let's give this a try and let's see what you can do and just give it 30 days and see how, how much your life can change in a short period of time. Because I, I always tell my clients, I'm like, I'm there for you. I'm a, I'm a supporter. I am your cheerleader. I help you with accountability. But I'm going to... I'm going to light a fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just sit there. So when you work with me, I'm going to help you to really set the tone quickly. And we're going to create a plan in a short period of time. where you are going to start seeing changes, especially if you're implementing on a daily basis. So it's, I think, you know, the key is always helping them to remember that it's not going to happen necessarily overnight, but when you start taking those even little steps every single day, you're going to see progress and you're going to feel better. And you're going to know that that level of commitment is creating change. Right. So you kind of just touched on it, but why don't you tell us what kind of programs that you offer and what you've got coming up? <clears throat> so, so I currently offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, as I said, with those three different um, timelines, the three month, six month and year. And uh, I always provide my clients an opportunity to to do kind of a meet and greet thing where it's it's actually called a breakthrough session where we go through and we get a really clear understanding of what are the greatest needs, what are the greatest challenges right now, and uh, what would be appropriate in order for you to move forward. Um, I also offer group coaching programs. So uh, those are, I do have a signature program that I offer four times a year. It's called Level Up and it's a six-week program. So it's really great for someone that's kind of in the beginning stages and they're looking to level up every area of their life. And we just, we get clarity on all of the, the basics from the mindset, limiting beliefs to habits, routines, um, creating a new structure for basically the way that they live on a daily basis. And that's been a really fun one that I've continue to fill. Um, and it gives them an opportunity to really see how I coach. So starting with a group setting, and then if they like to up level to one to one, then they, they can do that. Um, I also offer other um, groups. So depending on what those topics are, I, I usually survey my audience and see what the greatest needs are at that time. But typically, it will be <clears throat> similar to level up just in a deeper capacity. So for those that are ready to really get in the trenches of developing a new mindset and going through those limiting beliefs, because that, that can be tough, you know, and it, for, for those that are uh, ready to do it in a level that they're really digging out, they want to peel back the layers of the onion and, and they're looking to, to take things to the, that next level. Um, those are great opportunities as well. And then I'm also, I'm looking at doing a women's event. I don't have an exact date yet, but I, it's definitely going to be this fall. So it's, it's either going to be in October or November. I'm just currently looking at locations, but it is going to be a women's empowerment event where we're going to focus on a lot of the things that we talked about today uh, for, you know, setting the tone for new habits and restructuring their day, restructuring uh, their their lifestyle ultimately so that they can have more fulfillment, more joy, more freedom um, <clears throat> and more quality moments versus quantity. 
And I always like to say quality is when you're completely present, where, where you're not worrying about what's going on later on in the day or tomorrow. And you're, you're just fully in that moment and immersed. And it's almost like you kind of transcend to, to that place, into that space. And you're like, I, I'm just happy to be here. So, so that's what will help the audience to create and um, you know, give them opportunities to do really hands-on activities to make that a reality in their life. So I'm, I'm very excited about offering that this fall and uh, would love to share more as soon as we get those dates solidified. That is awesome. I uh, know you're very busy. And I see, I follow your page a lot too. So I see a lot of the events that you put out there. But one thing that I've noticed that uh, you involve your kids in this process and uh, kind of shifting into that a little bit, what what motivates you to do that or how, do, how does that all fit together for you? So I, I feel like my kids are just such a huge part of my life and especially since COVID and then all the things that have evolved with, with the home life situation, I feel like that there's just this, there's more of an acceptance of kids just being in it with you through, through, through and through, you know, every, <laughs> through, they're there too. Um, but I, I really want to, the reason I wanted to showcase my kids so much is to, to give individuals that are working from home and, and trying to navigate it all, the sense that you don't have to be perfect and life doesn't have to always be a certain way where, you know, I, I'm only professional <laughs> during <laughs> the period of time. Like I I can be authentic too. And and I, I can be in a way where I'm I'm showcasing the the greatest part of my life and, and the purpose of my life is also, you know, to be a mother. It's not just coaching. I, I love my kids with all my heart. And I, I want to be able to uh, show other moms, show other parents that life is, you know, from if, if we are really talking about life from its fullest capacity, we we look at how our kids influence us and, and how they are a part of it. And, and so I created that YouTube series, Crazy mm -hmm. Mom TV, because I wanted to be able to showcase um, motherhood, business building, entrepreneurship, and, and doing it all from a standpoint that uh, it can be done, but it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> so, yeah. so that it's important for us to remember that, that, you know, there, there is no perfection and that, that we yeah. all can, as we started the podcast, we all can give ourselves grace um, in challenging circumstances. And, and when I work with a lot of my clients, they'll have kids in the background, we'll come up and give them a hug or, you know. Uh, from experience, I have a seven-year-old son that would never, um, the biggest hug that he wants to give me is 100% when I am on a Zoom meeting. 100%. <laughs> and as a mom at first, you're like, oh, that's not professional, but you know, that's the reality of life. If I don't let him come in for that big hug, he's going to be standing on the other side of my computer trying his darndest to get my attention. And so you just got to embrace it at some point. It is so true. Yep. <laughs> they want to be a part of our lives as well. And it's it's good for them to be able to see what mom does, what dad does, and and how it's impacting when, you know, before pre-COVID or pre-being able to work from home, you ask a, a child, well, what, what does your parent do? Well, I don't know. This is their title. This is what they do. But, you know, being able to see that really makes a difference and, and gives them clarity as well. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more. And and my oldest is is very intrigued uh -huh. <laughs> about the online world. He's He's nine going on 10. And he's like, this is so cool. Like you can just do this, all of this from your computer. And I'm like, it is cool. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing how you can do so much from home. So now, <laughs> You touched on something else too, just a bit earlier. And that was your books. Uh, but 
I know, you know, you're a published author. Can you talk a little bit about maybe your writing process and what prompted you to write, you know, the first one and then maybe continue writing? And I guess I'm not sure how many you've written, but you can share that as well. Sure. So, so I've actually written three books and as a youngster, I love to write. So that was like one of my favorite things to do as a child. I have all of these like messy cartoon pictures with with the handwriting that's kind of all over the place but nonetheless I wrote and uh, that's just I I feel so freeing to me I guess if we were to go back to the relaxation question that would be one thing that I love to do is to sit down and write and and I just I am absorbed into it so whether it's writing a self-help book or a book that um, is scary or fictional or whatever i i love to be able to just sit down um and and put the pen to paper and and i think that there's something so freeing about that so whether you're journaling or you're taking time to just do a brain dump at the end of the day uh it it significantly impacts the way that we feel and and just that allowance of being let letting things to flow through you and and i I will say that it's just been on my heart to write so many different things. And the first book, Unleash Your Potential, was was one that was near and dear to my heart. I share a lot of my life experiences in that. And I'm able to really go through and do it in an action-oriented way where I help the the individual that's reading it to write things down as they go. So So it is kind of like a workbook as well as something that you would read, but I wanted to be able to provide a step-by-step guide to, to help them to get clarity. Um, as, as I've talked about in my coaching, a lot of the habitual and routine-based things that people do are things that we don't necessarily think about all the time. And when we write it down, it can make all the difference in the world. And uh, with the other two books, um, Hey, Do You Need Exposure? That was mainly about uh, creating more of a presence online because I, I used to actually have a videography business. And so I, I did a lot with helping entrepreneurs get their businesses promoted and, and create engaging videos. Um, so that's a, a lot about creating videos that, that sell your business. So, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and then also uh, I have a 60 day devotional, which is, um, you know, just sitting down, reading a devotional uh, for 60 days. And then, they're about one to two minute reads and I take from life experience and apply scripture to, to those experiences. And, and uh, again, just goes back to my love for writing and, and sharing a message that I feel prompted to share. And, and I'm in the midst of writing a new one right now. So I'm, I'm hoping to release that at some point this year. Um, haven't found as much time <laughs> this year to, to do it, but um, I, I am getting back to being committed on a daily basis, even if it's just, you know, a couple sentences. And that's what I would say to anybody that's wanting to write a book that just doesn't have anywhere, any idea where to start, sit down and, and just put the pen to paper because a lot of the time, you know, we, we just have this big idea in our head and we're, we're trying to figure out, like, I don't even know where to start with this whole thing. Uh, I, I think just getting thoughts down on paper and then starting to organize those thoughts uh, helps you to start mapping out the book. And when I wrote all three of my books, I wrote out the chapters first. And, and so each chapter was basically an objective point of what I was going to cover. And that helped me to kind of stay on track with the direction I was headed uh, throughout the book and for the flow of the book. Oh, uh, well, very interesting. I just uh, have, I mean, I do some writing myself. It's not something I enjoy and I've not published a book, although it's on my radar. I just find though, as I learned to journal though, and just for even clients, I work with clients a lot on this. It it helps our minds who race sometimes and so many thoughts go through them. Once we can put a pen to paper, it really helps us bring the focus back in. So there's a lot of benefits to writing it's uh kind of slows us down and just draws us into what we're you know journaling i guess is even another site or a piece of it that i really promote for people so definitely i identify because i see the results and how healthy it is for the mind to do some writing and journaling and things like that 
Yep. What is it that you would want people to know about you? And I know we've covered a lot, so maybe it feels like a redundant question at this point, but I I didn't know if there was something you wanted to add kind of in that, you know, something that you you feel they would benefit from or maybe a potential client. Yeah, well, I I would love people to know that I'm extremely passionate about helping them to succeed and and to get results in their life. Um, and, And I know that that's a very vague statement. Um, but I do like to think of myself as a new beginning. So I would love to be able to share myself more with them. And, and so in order for them to do that, they're, they're welcome to follow me on social media um, to get more plugged in with the content and the information that I provide. And um, just allowing them to know that um, what I do is 100% authentic. So I'm, I'm only coming from an authentic space where where I want them to with no strings attached um you know just I I want to help them to seize the moment to live in the moment to to make the most of everything they do in their life uh because that's I think where they're going to feel the most content the the most fulfilled and they'll be able to create the greatest impact in their own personal space and their families um, so I want to be an advocate for that. And, and I would love to be able to connect further with those that, that are looking to move their, their life into that place. You had mentioned social media. Where can people find you? So I am on almost every social media platform. I can be found on LinkedIn at Genesis Hay Crick. I'm, I'm also on Facebook. I Genesis Hay Crick Life Strategist. I'm on Instagram at Genesis Hay Crick. If someone wants to look me up on, on the web, they can go to my website at genesisspeaks.com. And um, in all of those places, I will be listing upcoming events and engagements and uh, opportunities to, to coach if they're interested. That is awesome. I really want to thank you for joining us this morning and appreciate that uh, you took this time to visit. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Please be sure to check out our other episodes as we are on most social media platforms. Check out Gary Bontrager Consulting. We've got some great content coming your way. Have an awesome day and remember, every moment matters.